This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Sylvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is March 7th, 2024. Jonathan Osborne here, as always, joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. We are safe and sound back in Florida. Your Orlando Magic have now won the last five games in a row. Luke Sylvia, you know what that means. What's going on? I do know what that means. We get back from from Charlotte, and I don't know, Jonathan. It just feels a little little hotter here and i don't know if it's the, i don't know if it's because we're in florida again or if it's because our orlando magic have extended the win streak to five and jonathan you you know what that means i know what that means give the people what they want we'll we'll, we'll give them what they want <laughs> yeah the nipples let's go man five <laughs> oh, bro, get this thing off me that was incredible so I'm just glad the, the the shirt rip worked. I didn't yeah, reverse it. Awesome. I didn't use another shirt. So yeah, you guys officially got the nips. You're welcome, first and foremost. And thank you to the Orlando Magic for the five game win streak to allow me the opportunity. But yeah, from now on till the Magic lose again, shirts are off. The shirt's been ripped. Harps I'm off. not wearing a shirt to work. I'm not wearing a shirt home. I'm just going to be shirtless. So the shirt is off for the foreseeable future. Love that. Yeah. Magic with their fifth win in a row tonight. 21-point comeback in Washington. The biggest comeback of the season for the Magic. Tied for the sixth biggest comeback in franchise history. We'll talk about that game. Obviously, we'll talk about the win in Charlotte, uh, as well as our our trip and all that kind of stuff, which was really awesome. A lot of fun. Met a lot of you in Charlotte, which was awesome. And yeah, this has just been a, a really great week so far. Ton to talk about. But before we do that, uh, we teased last episode, uh, we're doing our next group night. So I want to give everybody uh, as much information as we can here, sort of get through this in in just a a minute here. The next group night that we are going to do is going to be this month. It is going to be March 30th when the Orlando Magic are set to take on the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, we're going to be sitting in section 118. But there's something incredibly special about this group night. The Magic came to us with this opportunity and said, hey, we want you all to do this group night. And for people that come to this group night, we are going to let you play on the Kia Center floor for a couple of hours prior to the game. So we are bringing 60 Magic fans uh, before that game, so earlier that afternoon from like like the one to three window, like somewhere in there, as we get closer, we'll be able to share more specific details. But we're bringing 60 Magic fans with us to this game where earlier in the afternoon, we will hoop on the Magic's floor. You will be able to play basketball in Kia Center on the Magic's NBA floor for two hours earlier in the day. Then we'll all leave. People will go and shower, whatever they might need to do. Then we are going to head over to Jam Hot Chicken, uh, where you can you know buy food if you want to eat. You can just hang out and enjoy the vibes if you want. So we'll go to Jam Hot Chicken, and then we'll all go uh, to the Magic game against the Grizzlies. We'll all be sitting in Section 118. So uh, we've already rolled this out to our patrons. We're now rolling this out to the public here on Thursday. So we do think these tickets are going to go fast. So I am going to let you know right now, I'm about to give you the URL. So if you're driving, you can pull over. If you're working, take a break. Whatever you need to do, I'm going to give you the URL now because there's only 60 tickets. We've already sold a decent amount so far. And once these are gone, they are gone. They are going to be, I think, around $100. Whenever we do these type of group nights, there is like dynamic pricing that we can't control. The last I checked, I think they were like $100.89. Something like that. So here is the URL. It is Fevo, which is spelled F E V O. So Fevo dash enterprise.com slash event slash sixth man and then the number seven. So Fevo dash enterprise.com slash event slash S I X T H M A N seven. 
that will bring you to the FIVO site where you can purchase your tickets. There's only going to be 60 of these sold, so get them as soon as you possibly can. Luke, I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you. I know we're both incredibly excited for this, but this is like a once in a lifetime type of opportunity. Super excited for this. It's, it's going to be so much fun. You and I have gotten to do a lot of cool things doing the show. You and I have never been presented the opportunity to play on an NBA floor of any sort, despite the other opportunities we've gotten with the Magic and the players we've talked to and whatever else. That is how big of an opportunity this is. Because it's no secret, any NBA fan and any, NBA, any Magic fan would love to do this. So now that the opportunity is here, you and I aren't going to pass it up. And hopefully, uh, if you guys are make it, able to make it happen, we'll see you guys there on March 30th. It's going to be a great time. Really, really can't wait for that. Shout out to the Magic uh, for you know allowing this opportunity. And uh, like I said, it's like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Never thought it would be something that we'd be able to do. So can't wait for that. Can't wait to see you all. You know, all of us hooping. Got to get the jump shot ready. Haven't shot a basketball in probably like five or six months. Yeah, I'm going to awesome. try to do that a few times over the course of the next couple of weeks so that I'm not just ice cold when we get out there trying to work on the handles a little bit in the garage as well. <laughs> a lot of stretching over the course of the next couple of weeks. We don't want anybody to get hurt, obviously. Uh, so yeah, very much looking forward to that. Now, the NBA standings, especially the Eastern Conference standings, are really tightening up. It's no secret that we have a big game coming up against the Knicks on Friday. So uh, producer Kevin, uh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to, to, to join this one because I've got uh, for those of you that remember Will, OG of the Six Man Show, he's getting married this weekend. Uh, so I've got some stuff going on, you know, as it, we're getting closer to the wedding. So I don't know that I'll be able to make it, but Kevin uh, is going to do a playback on Friday, I think starting at 730. We've got the Cavaliers taking on the Timberwolves. That's going to be a big game. We're just now like, I think like three, three and a half games back of Cleveland. We've got the Pelicans taking on the 76ers. The 76ers lost tonight to the Memphis Grizzlies. So they're sort of keep continuing to, to drop in the standings in the Eastern Conference. Then we've got the Thunder taking on the Heat. Thunder have been one of the best teams in the league, one of the best teams in the Western Conference all year. Uh, so a Thunder win over the Heat would be really big. And then uh, maybe the Bucks may or may not be out of reach. We are now five games back of Milwaukee. So Milwaukee plays the Lakers in LA. So tons of big games on the slate Friday night. So producer Kevin is going to be doing a playback, mostly watching the Magic game, but I'm sure he'll be providing updates uh, on scores around the league that night. Next, our next episode of the Six Fan Show is going to be filmed this Sunday when the Magic take on the Indiana Pacers. Really big game uh, as it pertains to the Eastern Conference uh, you know, playoffs and, and the standings right now. So uh, Ben will be outside of Kia after that game Sunday night. So looking forward to that. And then the last piece of magic news before we actually talk magic basketball here, or six-man show news rather, our, our next watch party is going to be March 15th when the magic take on the Toronto Raptors. I know on the last episode we said that's going to be at Johnny's filling station. There's been a change to that. We are now going to be at the Twisted Handle, which is located at 1632 North Mills Avenue in Orlando. Tip-off of that game is going to be 730. Man, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Let's get into the state of the Magic, Luke. This week, the Magic are 2-0 and so far with wins over Charlotte and Washington. They currently sit fourth in the Eastern Conference on March 7th. Who would have thought? With a record of 37-26, 11 games over 500. 12 games back of Boston, five games back of Milwaukee, three and a half games back of Cleveland, a half game up on New York, a game up on Miami, two games up on Indiana, seven games up on Chicago, eight and a half games up on Atlanta. On the season, the Magic are 22nd now in offensive rating with a rating of 113.3. They're fourth in the league in defensive rating with a rating of 111.2. They're 12th in net rating with a net rating of exactly two. Luke, now with, what is it, 21 games left to go in the season, the Magic are 11 games up, like over 500. It would be pretty difficult to see the Magic not finishing at least like a couple of games over 500. Like it feels like, you know, 44, 45 wins is almost inevitable at this point with the potential to get to, you know, 50. 
You've got 19 games left. 19, so got, even better. You've got 19 games left, and two of which are against Charlotte, one against the Blazers, one against the Grizzlies, two against the Raptors, one against the Nets, one against the Rockets. Those are pretty much those are your easiest games left. All very winnable, and that is like nine went nine games out of the nineteen left. So even if you when if you do let's say you win all nine, you lose the rest, which is not likely how that shakes out. Just whatever for variable reasons, but that means that you finish the season with forty six wins. So you feel good about that at that point. Forty six and thirty six. Hopefully, it th- should be good for the sixth seed. We'll see as close as this race has been, but you've got the Sixers who struggle without Joel Embiid, as we saw against the Grizzlies tonight. I believe they're now like 6-19 and 19 without him this year, so something like that. But they're, they're not good without Joel Embiid, and you've got all these other teams banged up, and you just got to keep taking advantage of it, winning the games that you should win and stay competitive in the ones and make it a 50-50 game against teams that are just better than you. Even our like most optimistic expectations before the season, we were like, you know, we were at 42, 43 mm-hmm. wins. Like we felt like that was realistic. And yeah, like I don't think anybody could have predicted that the Magic were are legitimately going to have a, at least an outside chance of reaching fifty wins this season. Just a special group. Like we're gonna talk about the the last couple of games that the Magic have won and just the level of like grit and like resilience that they've had to show. Just a special group, a special season that we're witnessing. It's just been so much fun. Let's take a quick look at the injury report here. Uh, Markel Fultz missed Tuesday's game in Charlotte for knee injury maintenance. And then he played on Wednesday, luckily. So, you know, this trend seems like it's just going to continue here. Jonathan Isaac and Gary Harris missed Wednesday's game in Washington for injury maintenance as well. J.I., uh, obviously, it's the, the, the knee. Uh, Gary Harris or J.I. it's the knee hamstring whatever exactly was was going on with him luckily J.I. has mostly been healthy this year again something that's just been a revelation and then Gary with the 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 calf strain uh, injury maintenance missed Wednesday's game and then Wendell missed Wednesday's game with a sore right knee which if you listen to the post game live that we did immediately after the Charlotte game it, it was maybe not expected but wasn't a big surprise because like I mentioned, you know, in like the third quarter, he like headed to the locker room and then came back. Don't think we really saw him in the fourth and was sitting there with the Theragun like on his thigh, like knee area. So not really surprising. But Luke, like I, I again, just to echo, like here we are, March 7th, 37 and 26, continue to win, win games here. No Markel Tuesday. And then Markel is available on Wednesday. You don't have J.I. You don't have Gary Harris, who has been starting. You don't have Wendell. And it's Goga that's inserted into the starting lineup and Anthony Black. So when I heard that Gary Harris was going to be out and Markel was playing, I said, okay, if we're going to get Markel back into the starting lineup, this is the perfect opportunity to, to do it. We've been talking about this the last few episodes. Jamal Mosley decides to go with Anthony Black in the starting lineup. It pays off. Markel Fultz coming in off the bench yet again, it kind of feels like Markel is just going to play with the bench unit from this point forward. Fully healthy, keep, the starting lineup looks like it's J.I., Gary, Franz, Paolo, Wendell. I keep wondering, and then Mosley does something when I start to make a decision on what I think. Anthony Black, like you said, getting the start makes me think at that point, oh, well, let's see how it goes. Let's see how the minutes play out. And we'll see if uh, down the stretch, like we'll we'll see who starts, we'll see who finishes, and then in the final minutes, Jonathan, uh, you don't see Anthony Black or Markel because Cole Anthony's in the yeah, game. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But so, to me, the just not wanting to get ahead of myself with the Markel Fultz, like where he's going to be, what his role is on the team. I don't want to get ahead of myself in the sense that like. If Anthony Black's a surefire, star, surefire starter, didn't, don't you also have enough confidence in him to finish these, these games? And he didn't. And I understand Cole had it going, but at the same time, I don't know. I'm not ready to say Markel Fultz is going to be on the bench the rest of the year. Yeah, we'll talk about that because that was 
probably the only issue that I had with Mosley's decision making in that Washington game. But we'll we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Let's talk about uh the Hornets game and, and like the the Charlotte trip. So first of all, the trip was incredible. We found the good eats, you know, midnight diner for breakfast. We hit cookout. Uh Luke sat dinner out, wasn't wasn't feeling a hundred percent uh dinner time, but uh, you know, st- stepped up to the plate, met us at the game. We, you know, cheered our little hearts out. We got uh, to be like 10 feet away from J. Cole from yes. the majority of the night, which was pretty crazy. We had a little cameo appearance on uh, both broadcasts, <laughs> the Charlotte broadcast and the Orlando broadcast. We'll talk about, really about all that. But the the best part of the trip for me was getting to meet people like all the magic fans like that you know, f- either drove up from Orlando or that live in the Charlotte or the, like the Carolinas area, getting to meet everybody, getting to hang out at halftime. And uh, yeah, just get to meet people that you've been talking with online for years. It was just really dope. Like we had like 15 magic fans that we got the opportunity to take a photo with at halftime. Just, just really a great trip. Happy to be home though. I had an experience, a road magic game in, uh, probably 12, 13 years prior. The only away games I've been to was at Boston and at Atlanta. And that was when I was younger, like I said. And I wasn't exactly taking notes on how many Magic fans were in the building because I just wasn't thinking about it because I was so young. So I don't know if it's just because... I don't know if it's because the Magic are just good this season or if it's because... I just have never not haven't been to a road game in forever, but there were just so many Magic fans, so many more than I expected. Like walking up, instantly I was seeing Magic gear, people with like the throwback jackets on, the windbreakers, people with the first player jersey I saw was Jalen Suggs, and then I just kept seeing Jalen Suggs like a couple more jerseys in a row, and then obviously you've got the Palo and the Franz and the custom jerseys and whatnot. But that was just the the craziest part to me was how many Magic fans were there. Obviously, it was still, you know, it wasn't like it wasn't like Knicks Magic in 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 Orlando with all the Knicks fans, but it was still an impressive amount considering you're a small market team, fresh off of this rebuild. Can we say that now? We're are we done with the rebuild? I think we're so. done. So fresh off the rebuild, and just a lot of representation was was really happy to see that and super encouraging for the future of the organization that you know all, all the magic fans aren't just in florida yeah it was really awesome again getting to meet everybody so we, we sat like a couple rows off the floor but the this the, i have to say something this this is going to be a hot take people aren't going to like this from a purely basketball perspective i enjoyed the vibe of spectrum center like i mm-hmm. i really did like obviously not like hornets fans being there obviously i, I would prefer it to be nineteen thousand deep like magic diehards but just like the layout of the arena like it just feels more like a basketball facility and the layout of the seating like everybody is on top of the floor which is what i really like like kia obviously it's a it's a great venue for basketball games but first and foremost, it is like a multi-purpose, you know, multi-use event facility. It, it's not specifically geared for basketball. And Spectrum Center felt more like it was geared specifically for basketball. So we weren't technically on the floor, but we were four inches off the floor. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting there like we had great seats. It was awesome. We're getting ready for the game to start. And out comes freaking J. Cole like that. I haven't been starstruck in a while. Yeah. And we all like collectively freaked out <laughs> when J. Cole came out. Kendra sitting there doing like her pregame hit for the Bally broadcast. And even she couldn't help like she was to in her like defense, like kept her composure and didn't really seem phased. But you could see like her eyes light up like, oh, my gosh, like J. Cole is five inches from me. So that was really dope. And then we're sitting in the game and the the Bally Charlotte like broadcast is a little bit off to our left, getting ready to do some kind of like in game hit. And Kevin's like, "Oh my gosh, like we're gonna be right here in this shot." So when they start filming and the lights come on, like you know, we're flashing our our magic jerseys and everything. And Kevin has the ingenious idea to pull up the six man show logo on his phone 
and like show it to the camera. So the six man show logo made it onto the Charlotte broadcast. And then within like 30 seconds, our friends over at the Valley Sports Florida team, like the whole production team and Dante and Jeff gave us a, a nice little shout out on the broadcast, which like my phone was blowing up like with notifications on Twitter and Instagram and text and uh, you know, people in my personal life be like, yo, you guys are on the broadcast. We're like, what do you mean? So like, we're, people are sending us the video. We're like trying to watch it and listen to it <laughs> in the stands. And yeah, that was, that was just a really dope, like surreal moment. Like never, ever thought that that would happen. And yeah, that was super cool. Yeah. What if I told you the craziest part of our night in Charlotte, this, the second craziest part would be J. Cole sitting in front yeah. of us because the craziest part is being shouted out on the Valley Sports broadcast. That was that was nuts. I couldn't believe that that Dante did that and, and shout out to the broad the production team, all of them. They don't have to do that stuff. Yeah. There, there's no reason to do that. We we didn't expect that at all. We talked with with Jeff and uh Dante, Jeff Turner and Dante before the game, talked to him for a minute and walked away and that was it, right? Like that's we were like, okay, like that was great getting to see, you know, people within the organization and people that we have formed connections with super awesome opportunities. And then for them to just go a step further and shout us out meant a whole lot and something I'll never forget. It's a clip that I will have the rest of my life just because that's what we grew up with. It was cool enough that like Ryan Bass shouted us out um, yeah. on the broadcast a, a few months ago uh, during it was it the halftime report. I think yeah. Pre-game or halftime, just like different stats that we had tweeted right. out. I thought that was cool. And I thought that, was that might really be cool. the, the peak of our, feature on on ballet sports but to uh to, to have that that moment forever is 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 incredible and shout out to dante yeah that was incredible and then obviously we're going to talk about the charlotte game in depth but the last couple of minutes of that game we've been in kia time and time again like so many magic fans can relate to this where an away team comes in kicks your butt there's a strong contingency of their fans and over the course of the last minutes the let's go heat Knicks, Celtics, whoever it is, Warriors, Bulls, those chants start to echo throughout the lower bowl. And we said, you know what? Listen, Charlotte, nothing against you all, but it's our turn. And the last couple of minutes, like we started the, you know, the let's go magic chance and sort of got that going. If you go back and listen to the last you know, minute or so of that game in the broadcast, you can, you can hear us a little bit. It's faint, but you can hear us a little bit. And then, of course, we were singing, you know, the Orlando Magic song and, 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 you know, chanting, play the song towards the end of that game. A lot of Charlotte fans were not happy about that and they let us mm -hmm. hear about it. But, you know, you go into an opponent's arena and, and, and you want to be there and support your team just as if you're, you know, at, at home or, you know, in, in the Kia Center. And we definitely made sure that we did that and try to show out the best that we can and represent for all the Magic fans. And it was just a, an awesome night and, and really great to get the win. Yeah. Shout out to the, uh, older gentleman in front of us that at one point I heard him say, you guys just need to sit down. He didn't like it very much. That we that's, a, that's a high school call. That's a high school call, man. I said, he no, was, that's the correct call, sir. <laughs> Take that L. <laughs> that's a high school call. Yeah, it, was, so it was like, shout out to him. Like Franz is just getting hacked like every single time going to the rim. And we were letting the refs hear about it. And Jamal mostly who got you know, teed up at one point in the game was letting them hear about it. And they decided to give us like a little touch makeup call. And that, that guy in front of us couldn't really handle it. But all right, let's talk about this game against Charlotte. This was an ugly game, like really from the start until about like the last few minutes of the third quarter where the magic really started to take over. Um, but it was like for the most part, just a ugly, gritty, um, physical game. Like the, the you know, first few minutes, game was sort of going back and forth. Then all of a sudden, I look up at one point, the Magic are up seven, like towards the end of the first quarter. It's like, man, how do we get the lead? And then sort of, you know, the game starts to go back and forth. You know, Magic were uh, down at the half. Uh, they were down, uh, no, up up to, sorry. They were down uh, in the, the fourth quarter, but then ended up um, up to at the half. NBA.com is like really slacking right now. Don't even have the different half stats like I, I'm usually accustomed to uh, going to take a look at that um, and then to, to start the the third quarter like the Magic are, are trying to pull away in the game but Charlotte's um, really just like hanging around and then where this game like really took a turn is uh, the game was tied 53-53 
with 739 to go. Franz Wagner drives the right part of the lane, dunks over um, Miles, uh, Miles Bridges and Brandon Miller. Remember those guys uh, to take a two point lead. And then a couple of minutes later, Jalen Suggs, uh, it was uh, Wendell Carter Jr. And it might have been, I forget who it was that trapped um, Miller there, but they stripped the ball. It ends up in Jalen Suggs' hands. He drives the length of the floor and dunks all over Nick Richards to give the Magic a two point lead. And from that point, Luke, like the Magic really started to knock down shots. They take a nine point lead into the fourth quarter. Um, and, and don't really relinquish that. Like Played really well in that fourth quarter as well on their way to the victory over the Charlotte Hornets. That dunk, we talked about this on the postgame live, but like I, I just instant shot of adrenaline. One of the craziest dunks that I've seen in person and like really just got the Magic fans going, got the Magic going. Cole Anthony was big in the fourth quarter, really helped put the game away for the Magic. But those two dunks from Franz and then by Jalen, like really just you felt the momentum shift in that game. The Magic were super frustrated. Cole Anthony got a tech in this game. Jamal Mosley, we talked about, got a tech in this game. And for what was like an ugly physical game, the Magic just decided, hey, like we've had enough. Made a couple of big plays to kind of swing the momentum and, and get the team going. And to their credit, they're able to pull off the 101 89 victory in Charlotte. Uh, for their fourth straight win and a, a big win, uh, you know, uh, on the road. As great as it was defensively, from that standpoint, you hold Charlotte to forty three in the first half. Obviously, eighty nine for the game. There was no reason offensively that you were you only score forty five points and a half against the Charlotte Hornets. You turn the ball over eighteen times, and thankfully, when the team is the team you're playing against is not very good, you're able to to kind of make have them make the same mistakes. The Hornets have 19 turnovers to your 18. But the Magic didn't play their game. And that comes from the fact that they scored only 42 points in the paint. Usually you're a team that's scoring like 56, 57, 58, all around there. Definitely not that low of an amount. You shoot more threes than you normally would as well. You shoot 35 of them. And there's a stat that, that Philip Rossman-Reich with uh, Locked On Magic and Orlando Magic Daily said today on his episode, or yesterday as you guys are listening to this, but his stat was that the, the Magic are now 5-16 and 16 when they shoot 35 plus threes in a game. 4-16 four, four and 16 coming into this game. But you don't play your game. Thankfully, you're able to pull away just because this team is not good. You don't hit free throws. You're 8 of 15, 53%. While the Charlotte Hornets make all 11 of theirs. A lot left to be desired in this game, but thankfully redeemed by the fact that we were there for a win, but also the dunks that we had because it wasn't just Jalen, it was the, the Franz dunk, and then Mo was getting dunks as well. Like they just were punishing the rim. And at that point, you know, you, you start to feel pretty good about yourself. You end up winning every quarter except that second quarter you turn it up a little bit in that second half scoring 56 points as opposed to 45 i mean let's be honest you just took out the trash right like that's 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 what it felt like this team was doing palo had palo was pretty rough early on what he finished with five turnovers five turnovers for him four turnovers for franz franz finishes with just eight points in this one Really uncharacteristic game from a lot of guys in this one. It was good to see Cole Anthony step up to the call. 5 for 11 from the field. 14 points. And, I mean, when you look at the, when you look at the box score, it's like, uh, who else had a really good game? Obviously, Joe Ingles, 8, eight assists, 0 turnovers. Mo Wagner relatively good game for for his standards especially 11 points but you know you, you look everywhere else with Franz having single digits and you know obviously you have Gary with nine Suggs with four it was uh it was a very 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 odd game yeah Jalen I think had like the first basket of the game and then yep. didn't score again until that dunk on Richards which 
really was in my opinion the play of the game like it, it, it like the Franz dunk sort of got the momentum rolling a little bit but like Jalen's dunk just like took all of the oxygen out of that building like he mm-hmm. he dunks that we're going crazy magic fans are going crazy but the rest of spectrum center is just like completely silent like really couldn't believe what had just happened and like you said Cole goes on to have you know, the the big fourth quarter that he does, you know, seven points, three of six from the floor, uh, really helped like put the game away for the Magic. But like to the Magic's credit, like we talk about this, like hey, like you just need to win the games at this point that you should. Not going to complain too much about wins that come at this point in the season. You just need to keep winning games, and they got away from it a little bit in that first half, like twelve first half turnovers. Turnovers have been an issue all year, but like their ability to just like clamp down defensively in that second half, you know, uh, uh, again, Charlotte, you know, 23 points in the third and fourth quarters and just your ability when things aren't going your way and like adversity hits, like one of the worst, like officiated games (laughs) of the year. I feel like we say that a lot, but like this one, seeing it up close and like seeing the fouls happen 10 feet from you and you're like, the ref is, two feet away from it and and watches it and doesn't call it. But the ref that's 25 feet away realizes it was so egregious that he could see it from where he was standing. And this other guy doesn't blow the whistle. So he has to. And I don't know that I remember a game this year where the the magic were more frustrated by officiating in this game. And uh, I think it, it was after the Cole Anthony tech I think it was that Jamal Mosley like brings everybody together, like huddles up the team and basically like calms them down and sort of regain their composure and the magic go on to, to, to get the dub. And yeah, it was awesome to get the win, you know, like last year in Charlotte was a ton of fun, but losing that game really sucked. And as much fun as you can have, like the day of making a trip like that, if you lose, it, it kind of feels pointless. So it was really good to, to come away with the W. All right, let's go ahead and give a quick shout out to our patrons. Literally, we could not go on that trip without the support of our patrons. So I want to give you all a very special shout out. Uh, If you want to help support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. We have a few or a couple, I should say, uh, brand new patrons. Shout out to Michael Thompson, longtime listener of the show. Uh, Joined the Patreon at our Hall of Fame tier level. Got to meet Michael and his lovely wife and, and their daughters at the game in Charlotte. They made the trip really, really nice meeting you guys. Uh, been talking online with Michael Thompson for a long time. And uh, again, to be able to, to meet these people in person uh, after years of, uh, of talking and, and sharing in this fandom was really, really cool. So shout out to Michael. Thanks so much for uh, the support over the years. And thank you now for joining the Patreon. And then a big shout out to Mama Richmond, who joined the Patreon as well at the $10 level. Anytime we have brand new patrons, we give them a very special shout out and we give a special shout out to our Hall of Fame and elite tier patrons each and every episode. So we'll go ahead and start that now with the court cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin, Carson Tulo, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, normal magic player history, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch Day, Paolo and Francis Warren, Pierre A., Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Dunham, uh, Danimal, Dutto 15, Bobby Skinner, Goaty 93, Teddy Sylvia, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Bill Fulton, Edmund Lagona, Jose Esquilin, Caleb Pete, Cannibalism, Ty, Mr. TV, ESPN Really Sucks, Gear 95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Freak, and Shahan 177, Obi the Don, Himlo, Ben Himro, Arm Prof 221, Ray Pastrana, Magic Kid 714, Mysterious Mosley, Victor Cologne, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Wallace, Fritz, Currency Kev, Rev Sal, Case and Green, Santi Leon, Kane Eckler, The Distract, Ahmad Timsa, Chantu, Tom Gatson, Dead Air, Richard Tuttle, Jeremiah Cantero, Barstool Magic, Debo 1980, Magic Matt, Michael Thompson, and Mama Richmond. A big shout out to all of our patrons. Again, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Luke, talk to the people about Jam. Well, we mentioned Jam earlier, March 30th, after that. Uh, after we play on the court and people get freshened up and everything for the game that night, we are going to be heading over to Jam Hot Chicken, which group night with us or not, encourage you guys to go out there. We're located at 400 West New England Avenue there in Hannibal Square, Suite 13. In beautiful Winter Park, Jam Hot Chicken is a Nashville and LA-inspired chicken shack, locally owned and operated there. 
in Winter Park. You guys can find them at Jam Hot Chicken on all social media. You can also go to jamhotchickenfl.com, put in your order, order ahead of time, look at their playlist, everything like that. Go check out Jam Hot Chicken. Let them know we sent you. Yeah, and group night or not, like Luke said, even if you're not coming to like the game or you're not coming to the you know the the like hoop event like before the game, even if you're just in the area and you want to come and hang out at Jam with us prior to the game, like please feel more than welcome to to do that. Now let's talk about this uh, Wizards game tonight. The reason uh, that people can see your uh, your chest and your nipples and all that kind of good stuff that you got going on over there. Sure, Magic have now won five in a row. With the win over the Washington Wizards, second game of the back to back. This game was ugly. Like Magic just got off to a bad start midway through the second quarter. They were down 21 points. Magic are able to tighten that up a little bit. Believe they were down 11 at the half. Again, uh, NBA.com let me down here. Down 12 at the half. They were down 63 or 65 to 53. Outscore Washington 31 to 18 in the third. And 35 to 26, a 31 point swing uh, as the Magic go on to win this game, 119 to 109. I was a little bit concerned in that first half. Anytime the team goes down by 21, you start to get a little bit concerned because, like, okay, okay, this game is only a few minutes away. If it continues to go in this direction, a few more minutes, you're down 30. And when you're down 30, you almost never come back from down 30. 21, you're down 12 at the half, and I'm like, okay, we're good. Magic should definitely still be able to come back and win this game. Got away from their identity a little bit in that first half. Washington was doing a really good job of of moving the ball and and knocking down shots. The Magic were not doing a good job of being sharp defensively, not doing a good job of of, of knocking down shots from the perimeter in the first half. Uh, But the Magic just decided, and Jamal Mosley talked about this after the game, we just had to get back to our identity, which is exactly what they did. Uh, again, you know, hold in uh, Washington to 18 points in that third uh, and then uh, uh, 26 in the fourth quarter. Just good defensive half. Did what you needed to do. Guys got going. You know, Anthony Black hit some big shots in this game. Jalen Suggs hit some big shots in this game. Mo Wagner was incredible. 16 points. I believe 14 of those came in the fourth quarter. And then Franz Wagner with 28. Paolo Bancaro with 25 and 10. The double-double. Those guys really just led the charge for the the Magic. You know, fifty three points between the two of those guys, uh, and then you know Jalen had some really big timely buckets, some big threes. Anthony Black had a couple of big threes, helped get the Magic back into this game and helped them take the lead. Cole Anthony, you know, had big plays in the second half, and and Mo Varner, We talked about you know his performance in the fourth quarter. You know, sixteen points for him. Win the games that you should, Luke. Like it really comes down to that. It's as simple as that. Did they come out flat in the first half? They did. Second night of a back-to-back. I'm really tired of using that as an excuse. I, I wouldn't have used that an excuse, as an excuse had the Magic lost this game. But to their credit, they realized what was going on. They came out of you know, halftime ready to play. And yeah, like I just don't know what else there is to be said about Jamal Mosley, the way that he's coached this team, Like not only this year, not only last year, but like from the moment... He took the reins of this team. No matter how much the Magic are, are down, if they are down, like you know that third quarter run is coming. And they've been able to put a couple of those, you know, together in this recent stretch here. And like credit to those guys. Like, yes, second night of a back to back, it's tired. You and I didn't play basketball. All we did was take a couple of flights, eat food, watch and talk about basketball, and we're completely spent. Like, I have no idea how these guys do this for you know, six months out of the year. So yeah, you understand they're a little bit tired, but when like it was time for them to go out and make plays, they made the plays. This was a game on the schedule that you had to have. Producer Kevin talked about it in the post-game live. Yes, for the last several weeks, if you've looked, the Magic have had the easiest remaining strength of schedule throughout the league. That is now changing by you know, each game that we play against these bad teams. And there are challenging games that are coming up. You know, we've got New York, we've got Indiana coming up. Those are both essentially like playoff games for the Magic. And they needed to win this game. Palo and Franz put the team on their back. Other guys made timely plays. Jamal Mosley made sure that these guys knew what they needed to do in that second half. And to everybody's credit, they went out and did that. 
like you said, tired of using the back to back excuse. You can't use it against teams as bad as as the the Wizards are. Now they have lost, I believe, fourteen straight. I'm very thankful we did not become the reason that losing streak was snapped. Like Kyle Kuzma said about another team, the Detroit Pistons. At this point, you don't want to be that team. And that's the case for, ironically, his team tonight. You didn't want to be, you don't want to be that team that loses to the Wizards right now. They are the coldest team in the NBA right now. And that is not cold as a, as a good uplifting term about the Washington Wizards. But in this one, the second half, that's what you have to do when you put up such an egg in the first half. And then obviously you kind of wake up near the end of that first half. Like you said, you outscore score the Wizards 66 to 44 in that second half. And let's be clear as well. If last night's game and this night's game were against average teams, you likely lose both the way you started out specifically, obviously, against the Hornets and how you started out against the Wizards, absolutely down 21, the largest comeback of the season for the Magic. Largest comebacks of the season typically happen against the really bad team, so you're very fortunate that this was the case. Back-to-backs, is there something to it? I'm starting to think there absolutely is. You're now 4-9. and nine. If you're playing a good team tonight, you get your doors blown off. They don't, they don't mess up a 21-point lead, most likely. So you really should be you know, 3-10. and 10. On, on the back-to-backs. The one thing that we that we keep saying, come postseason, there can't be a back-to-back, so that's a good thing if you're a Magic fan. That would be awful if uh, if that was the case because we would not have much faith in this team to, to win those games because of what they've shown us this year. But Paolo Bencaro, can we just talk about really his vision and how incredible it truly is to have 10 assists tonight He's had like four or five, I think it's four, four um, double digit assist games in his career, all of which have happened this season. So to me, that's growth. Jamal Mosley wants to talk about growth all the time. That's growth. 10 assists against the Lakers in November of this season, 10 against OKC in February, um, just you know, about a month, a couple months ago, a month ago. Then tonight against Washington, he has 10 assists, four turnovers. You can live with the four turnovers if you're getting me double-digit assists. And then his career high is January 5th against Denver, where he was doing everything. And his 32-point, 10-point, 32-point, 10-rebound performance where he had um, 11 assists as well. So, Paolo just, man, hats off to him. The vision's incredible. The feel for the game's incredible to know when he should focus on doing what obviously opening the floor for others opens it for himself. He has 25 points on great efficiency, 10 of 20. He played a, a heck of a game and obviously Franz Wagner too, but I really wanted to talk about the, just the, the vision of, of Paolo Bencaro and the growth that's been shown. Uh, after the all-star break, like, you know, since, well, really since Paolo came back from, you know, the missing a couple of games with the illness, in four games, 26.3 points, 55% from the floor, 33% from behind the arc, 81 at the free throw line, but 26, 7, and 6 from Palo over these last four games since he's come back from being sick, just playing at a at a superstar level right now. It was just so impressive. Like as great as you know, Franz was, like, you know, the 28 points. Felt like he like was really aggressive, like immediately out of the gate tonight after not having a good game against Charlotte. But like hats off to Palo. It was just awesome. I do want to talk about Anthony Black. I know we alluded to this at the beginning of the show, but like Anthony Black like was instrumental in that run in the third quarter that helped get the magic back into the game. You know, hits a hits a big three uh, and then plays just one minute in the fourth quarter of this game as the magic are, are really, you know, trying to put the game away. And in this game, uh, let's see, where is it here? Uh, 21 minutes, 8 points, 1 rebound, 2 assists. But in 21 minutes was a, a plus 18 in the box score. Uh, against Charlotte in 27 minutes was a, a plus 7. Uh, I, I feel like Anthony Black is, it's similar to how I felt about Jalen like all last year. 
Like when Jalen is put in position to make winning plays when you need winning plays, he made winning plays. When Anthony Black is in the game and is being asked to knock down shots and like the kid is shooting 40% basically from behind the arc, I know it's on low volume, but when he has opportunities and he's open, he's knocking down those shots. And like defensively is it is really honestly incredible. Like had a big steal tonight, um, which led to a, a big play as the Magic were you know, trying to take the lead back from Washington. And it worked out tonight, you know, with Cole. Like Cole had some big plays down the stretch, but in the moment, it's just like Anthony Black has been really good in this game and like started the game and played well and played really well against uh, Charlotte. Like every big run that the Magic had against Charlotte, Anthony Black was in the game for, including like the 10 to nothing stretch that they had, um, I think in the fourth to like really start to put that game away. So it just sucks that like he's in and out of the lineup. Then now he's playing against Charlotte. Now he's asked to start against Washington, plays well, like isn't making mistakes, and then is just the guy that's getting sort of like the short end of the stick when it comes to the fourth quarter. So I still don't have a good feel for like what exactly is the the goal here. Again, I do feel like Markel is probably going to continue to come in off the bench, but it, it just sucks when like A B is just doing everything that he's asked to do playing really well when he's given the opportunity and then isn't being rewarded by being able to close these games. My only feeling with why Cole Anthony closes this one is just because he had been showing glimpses of like, I I can get you a bucket if you need a bucket throughout this game. You didn't feel like it's the Cole Anthony that we had, you know, even just recently where he was going to force things and and do his own thing. He, He only had like a, a couple shots tonight where I was like, oh, that you, you rushed that or that was ill-advised. So I want to say that's why, because everything points to Anthony Black with the, the other four that were in the closing lineup. Everything points to that they have yielded great results on high, high volume of possessions this year where Cole Anthony hasn't played too much with that closing group comparatively anthony black has so many more reps and has yielded better results so i'm gonna say that it was one of jamal's things where he's riding the hot hand and just thinking like leaning on some offensive output here down the stretch and trusting cole can hold his own defensively which by the way on a side note cole anthony with his block at the rim tonight was outrageous where he just steals the ball away it was like a it was a it was a true stop. Obvious. I think a, a block and a steal happened in the same play. Yeah, but that was incredible. So shout out to him for that. But um, yeah, I want to say that that Mosley was just showing some confidence in Cole Anthony there down the stretch. And who knows? But but yeah, it did make me feel a little weird. Like I said at the beginning of the show about where Anthony Black stands. Are you just throwing him into the starting lineup because Fultz is getting back into rhythm and you don't want to mess up the you know, anything else with the bench. I I don't really know. I don't know what the logic is at that point, but we'll continue to monitor it. Obviously we've got 19 games left and hopefully as we get further and further down the stretch, we get a better idea of what's going to happen and, um, and what the rotations are going to be. Yeah. I just feel like Anthony black is like being put in a lose, lose situation. It's like when everybody's healthy, you don't get to play. When guys are out, we're just going to thrust you into the starting lineup. And then not only are you going to hold your own, but you're going to perform well. You're going to be impactful, but then you're also not really going to be rewarded for making the impact that he does a lot of the time. Like, it, it, I don't really see him making a lot of mistakes. Like, can he be a little bit too passive offensively? Sure. But like, Teams are starting to close out on him. Like they're not just leaving him wide open anymore. And like when he's asked to knock down shots, he's doing so like pretty efficiently. Would you like to see him put the ball ball on the floor a little bit and, and get to the rim and, and attack and be aggressive? Sure. But he's not really hurting you offensively. If anything, like he's helping provide spacing. And yeah, he has the occasional like rookie defensive lap, but like 90, 95% of the time, 
the kid is just a lockdown dog of a defender on the perimeter and like and able to guard multiple positions. I know the like long term vision is there for him. I'm sure, you know, they I'm sure they love him. They have a lot of confidence in him and they see him being here and part of this team for a long time. But man, that's got to be rough on a young kid's confidence where it's like, okay, guys are healthy. I don't get to play. When I do play and I play well, I'm I'm not always being rewarded and in, in being able to be in those minutes that I feel like honestly he's earned. Like I when we have a rookie guard and we're saying like, no, like this kid should be on the floor to close games because he's been playing well. I just I don't know. I, I want to see him be rewarded in that instance. I can't really like fault Mosley because it worked out like Cole two performances in a row where like second halves, the magic have needed big buckets and, and Cole has showed up and, and gotten those, um, which is exactly what we need out of Cole Anthony. I, I don't mean to, this isn't like an anti Jamal or, or Cole thing. It's just like, I, I just wish there was more of an opportunity for Anthony black and it sucks that it's not always there right now. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of it is st- regardless of results. I think a lot of it is what Mosley just wants to do schematically, game in and game out. And the closing stretch, I mean, Cole Anthony and Anthony Black are totally different players. You have them in the game for completely different reasons. Cole Anthony can give you a scoring burst. Anthony Black can hit the open shot. But Cole is just, I mean, we know the, the the stark difference there between the two. So for me, it's also just kind of paying your dues. You're, you're a rookie. You're figuring it out. Your game's not perfect, but the Magic have done a great job putting him in situations to to showcase himself, regardless of the circumstances, and he's showed immense growth. So for me, it just feels like the long game with Anthony Black, and that's 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 totally fine with me because at the end of the day, the guy you put in for him didn't lose you the, this game and Cole Anthony, and that's the big thing. You walk out with a win, Cole Anthony had some nice stretches there down the stretch. So you live with it. You move on. You 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 know, there there's times where in the moment it doesn't make sense. But then if you're able to look at it and be like, oh, well, it, it nothing bad came of it necessarily. So hats off to to, to Jamal Mosley, in my opinion, doing what he think is thinks is best, going with his gut, and understanding Anthony Black is here for years to come and he's gonna get his opportunities and people are gonna be phased out. And people are going to be a, a product of consolidation, but I don't think that's going to be Anthony Black because of how he does step up in these situations. Yeah, Anthony Black and, and Jalen Suggs. Like I, it feels like every episode we're like gushing over Jalen yeah. Suggs. Like obviously, you know, friend of the podcast. Maybe there's a little <laughs> bit of bias there. I'll be happy to admit that. But like Jalen Suggs, like five threes tonight. I, I just I I'm continually amazed at the shooting leap that this dude has made six of 12 from the four tonight, five of 10 from behind the arc had big threes like that, that one, like um, as a shot clock was winding down where he got the ball with like a yeah. second and a half left and just throws it up and it drops in. It's like every single time that dude shoots the ball. Now I'm expecting it to go in. He was really big in this game as well. You know, had, you know, foul trouble in, in Charlotte was able to have a, a bounce back game for him. And I know we've talked about Mo Wagner as well. Uh, yeah, just just a good victory. Like it was super frustrating in that first half, being down twenty one, knowing that this team really should just come out and blow the doors off Washington. Uh, but I mean, you you come out and you get a victory. That's that's what we need. Now taking a look at the standings uh, again. You know, some of these uh, games have uh, finished uh, uh, wrapping up here. Um, looking at the. Standings at NBA.com, ESPN, all not loading currently. That's great. But the Magic have another opportunity coming up on Friday. They're a half game up on New York. If you're able to get that win, create a little bit more separation there. Two games up on Indiana. Would love to get another win. If you win two more games in a row, now you're sitting at 39 and 26. Would really just be awesome. Who knows what's going to happen with Milwaukee and, and the Cavaliers. You know, you're now three and a half games back of the three seed. I don't think that we get there, but you've got some winnable games coming up still here on the schedule. We've been talking about this, but taking a look at the the next couple of games here at New York, home for Indiana, then you've got Brooklyn, Toronto, Toronto, and Charlotte. If you can win the weekend here, New York and Indiana, 
like we're looking at a possible like 10 game win streak. I know we've mentioned that the last couple of episodes here. You go you get a 10 game win streak, you're probably going to find yourself either third in the Eastern Conference or like maybe a game or a half game out of three in the Eastern Conference and maybe like a game or a game and a half back of the two seed. There's there's not many teams that uh, are able to have a nine and then a, a 10 plus game win streak. That's pretty much, I mean, only Boston maybe can, can do that right now. They have now the, the league best winning streak at 11. That uh, ended March 3rd is what the site is saying. Um, so, and even still, they haven't, their, their, their longest streak before that was six. And they've done that a couple times. Point being, bad teams, below average teams don't do this. If you Google longest win streaks in the NBA this season, there is a site that lists out everything. And if you're what a bad is that team, site called? So this one is. I've never even heard of it, honestly, but it looks good. Uh, Champs or Chumps US. What a name. Yeah, what a name. So shout out to them because they created this table. But yeah, they'll show up for sure. If you just put longest win streaks in the NBA this season, uh, they've got a whole table. But yeah, it's it's only the, the, the above average teams that can put together win streaks. It doesn't matter who it's against. It doesn't matter that your schedule is a little weaker at this point. Everybody has some weaker parts of their schedule, but not everybody beats the teams they should beat. The Magic are doing that right now, regardless of how the game starts, they're finishing it. And that's just what they've got to continue to do. And like you said, if you're able to win the weekend, which is massive, it, which is going to be incredibly Pacers, difficult. I don't mean to make light of oh, that. Like, no, of course, to be able to beat New York in New York, who you've been beating up all season. I know they're still hurt mm-hmm. but the third game in four nights like it, it's going to be really tough to win in new york on friday it's, it's going to be very tough and, and quite frankly even if you if you split the weekend i will be happy yeah so win one of them but if you happen to win both of them you have a very very good shot at an 11 game win streak which Going i believe into- would be the longest streak in franchise history yes because prior to that it's just nine we're tied for we tied the win streak for the franchise and then the win streak longest one this season is 11. If you can beat New York and Indy, you've got Brooklyn, Toronto twice and Charlotte before you head or before you host New Orleans on March 21st. So, gearing up to be a continuing to be a really fun stretch. This team is doing things that we haven't seen this team do since 2011. And those are all good things. So hopefully we can keep it moving and a big weekend ahead. I genuinely don't like I would have no idea how to act if the Magic find themselves 42 and 26. Yeah, that'd be wild, that would right? just that would be it, it doesn't even seem real And 26. Let's see, because there's like what, like six games that would contribute to that 11 game win streak. So that would be yeah, you'd have 13 games remaining with that type of record you legitimately can get 50 plus wins if that's the case. If you do yeah. go on that streak, maybe getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but when you look at have, the schedule, I don't, I don't think it's not getting no, that far ahead. Like you, if you are able to beat New York and Indiana, the rest of those games, you're going to, you might even be favored. Um, You probably will be favored at home against Indiana. Yeah. I don't, are, are there odds? Probably not odds yet for, uh, or a spread yet for the next game. But those other games, you know, Brooklyn, Toronto, Charlotte, you'll be favored in each one of those games. Yeah, I mean, the, the getting ahead of ourselves, I hadn't looked, but there are no back to backs, which is great news. Yeah, in that stretch, so you're you're in prime position, and you don't have another back to back till the end of March, March 29th and 30th. You have the Clippers, then you play the Memphis Grizzlies, which is that group night that we're hosting. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right. I think that's going to do it for this one, Luke. If you got anything else before we go ahead and wrap this one up, and then hopefully we can all get some much needed sleep. No, we're good. Okay. That's going to do it for this one, folks. Again, uh, if you want tickets to the group night where we're going to play on the Magic's floor uh, prior to the game, 
Uh, tickets are going to go quickly. Uh, so go to fivo-enterprise.com slash event slash S-I-X-T-H-M-A-N, the number seven, fivo-enterprise.com slash event slash six man seven. I don't know why six man seven. That's just the link that we were provided. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to that. Go and get your tickets. Uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Next episode of the Six Fan Show is going to be Sunday when we play the Pacers. Next watch party, March 15th, Friday, Magic Take on the Toronto Raptors at the Twisted Handle, 1632 North, Mill Ave- North Mills Avenue at 730. Producer Kevin is going to be doing the playback Friday at 730 when the Magic Take on the Knicks and all those other important games going on around the league. That's going to do it for this one for Luke Sylvia, Jonathan Osborne, and Luke Sylvia's nipples. You all have been listening to the Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. See you. Thanks for listening to The Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sixth Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!